My name is Michel Rojkind. Uh, I'm a Mexican architect. Uh, I have an office based in Mexico. Uh, we work mainly in architecture, but we do product design um, and a little bit of a master planning. And I did architecture, but I, while, while I was playing the drums in a band where we were signed with Virgin Records for four years. So I was playing drums and doing architecture at the same time, with, which uh, made me understand at, the, at that very specific point that I wanted more things to kind of uh, stimulate me in order to be a bit more creative on the on the output of the things that I was doing. This is a project that we did way back with uh, our president uh, Cedillo. Um, so uh, what I wanted to, or what was I was paying attention to at this moment, is that I didn't want to be stereotyped. Uh, coming from the musical background, I mean, we had four albums with Virgin Records, and everybody, this, the, the typical question is, what type of music do you play? And they have to pin you down. They want to pinhole you in something. Uh, architecture seemed to be a rather uh, more aging career. So uh, by traveling with the band to different countries and different places that where we toured, I started having this incredible love for cities, infrastructure, uh, open spaces, the planning, the buildings. And that's where I really said I, I want to just be an architect. I want to be an architect uh, full time and, and really embrace it as a, as a whole experience of uh, designing experiences. Most of the creative processes uh, that we have at the office is what are we paying attention to? We try to make the client understand things that he didn't see originally. He comes with a brief and we go over the brief but we do research and we come back to him and we say this is your brief but this is what the city's happening. This is what's happening around the city so we know somebody that's close to us that's important that maybe so we try to bring people together to enhance the experience of, uh, of the project. We try to have an added value. We know that maybe we have some clients that are only interested in the financial part of a project. We have some clients that are more into the social. So, but we try to make every project have what is the added value. They can, it could be uh, the client, okay, he's going to have a return, an, an economical return, but give something to the society. If I don't make the client understand what he's not seeing, I'm not doing my job. That's why we created an area of the office called the ADD. We came up with this adaptive diagnostic design to really uh, make them understand that it was important for to give them the things that they were not seeing as I was explaining, to give them back how we can add value, not only economically, I don't, I don't care if they made more money, but it was a trade-off. How can I grab a money from a company like them and make them understand how to give something back? The interesting thing is that when the ADD started a couple of years ago, now we have clients coming in for the ADD that might not hire us as the architects at the end. They come in for the, con the con uh, 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 they hire us as consultants, we work with them, and then they say, okay, perfect. And then they might hire somebody else, which is okay with us. It has an architectural outcome, but to us the strongest idea now is that they understand what is the best thing they can do. This is the existing Cinetec, and as you can see, there's a big parking lot there. And uh, the brief was only to give four new um, uh, cinema areas, uh, seating areas, and uh, two more vault spaces. Uh, of course, we went back, we did a, a little bit of the diagnosis. This is a little bit of what, how we use. Uh, we explain in the red area how we pay attention to certain things and then uh, uh, how we select and then how we start to adapt them. And we figured out that the, if we use this big parking lot to reclaim it and to make it a park, to make it feel like a campus, it would be the first Cineteca that you didn't enter through a lobby and you were filtered into the different uh, cinemas or the different theaters. You would enter a park. You would walk through a park Another requirement was to do a rooftop and a, a covered area. And when we started working on a covered area, what we wanted to do is really uh, have something that was lightweight, that would look lightweight, and also that would have the, this quality of letting light pass by. Uh, this place ha uh, received 40,000 people per month, and it's now receiving 105,000 people per month. The challenges of Mexico City is, again, uh, there, uh, there's no equality. There, there, everything, I mean, you have the rich people, you have the, the extreme poor, so there's, there's, no, there's no balance with the, with the social condition. So, and that's why working with projects that might not sound glamorous at all, like a department store, for instance, where, where normally architects we would want to have a museum or you would have want to have a political a master plan well i think it's the common things that make also a difference so we're okay designing a department store if it can have a public space on the rooftop or if it can have experiences on the on the outside of the building that connect to the city this is in a suburb inside a suburb the first thing we wanted to do was perforate the building said no, no no we cannot perforate the building nobody that shops in our stores can look outside we don't want them to be, get distracted they want to, they, they need to shop they have to concentrate on shopping so, okay, 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 okay. So what if you have a big, big, big rooftop? What if we push all the equipment to the back 
and we put a garden on top. But let the, let, let's not put a garden because it's sustainable. Let's put a garden because it's going to be a space where we create an experience. So why don't we work together with your company and do something interesting? Now the rooftop uh, provides 30% of the income of the store. So that's something interesting to think about. They wanted iconic, and I told them, I don't want iconic because of the looks. I want iconic because it can really make a difference. Creativity can change a lot of things. I don't, I don't want to say the world, but, but creativity uh, can change the way we think. It, it's, it's, I'm thinking more in the creative part of, of the way we plan things. A lot of people come to me and say, well, laws are not creative. They're just dumb because this is how it works. No, there, there has to be very creative people to think of the new laws and the new regulations that are going to shape our cities. Because if that doesn't happen, it doesn't matter. There's not going to be a great building that will change it. There's not, there's not enough power in a building. There's not enough power in a street. There has to be a power of how to build these creative decisions from, from all levels. So creativity can change many things.